This lecture is on storage media. So why is this topic important? As you see this FUE case that I did, these are all graphs that have survived well, and storage media is one part of the equation. So how much does storage really factor in into the equation? Well, it's a smaller percentage. I would consider it minor, but nothing is minor when you want to do quality work. Other things in terms of survival really involves how you handle those graphs, time out of body, dehydration, crush injury, transection, all those things are more important, but this is still a vital lecture. So to me, I'm very passionate about regenerative medicine, which talks about uh, fertilizers, how you can get hairs to grow better. And really, there's a Venn diagram where they overlap. You can also consider it sort of a spectrum uh, where some parts overlap with regenerative medicine. And also, you could think of two sides of the same coin. So for example, if you look at the examples here, we'll talk about the things on the left, not much on A cell, which is an extracellular porcine matrix. That's really more the topic of regenerative medicine. And hypothermosol, you see there's sort of a, it sort of crosses over, ATP sort of crosses over, PRP sort of crosses over. And I think by the end of this lecture, you'll see the role of storage media. And I'll touch briefly on regenerative medicine so you have better clarification. So the topics that will be discussed here are the principles of understanding extracellular versus intracellular composition, pH, the importance of pH, temperature, the importance of temperature, energy and nutrients, and time out of body. So storage injury is one of the first injuries that, are, that we need to discuss. So there are several types of injuries, storage injury, cold injury, injury, and ischemia reperfusion. So when a graft is taken out of the body, you immediately get storage injury. You have an aerobic to anaerobic metabolism change. The pH becomes much more acidic, it drops. There's an influx of calcium and sodium into the cell causing intracellular edema and then programmed cell death, which is apoptosis, which only worsens with time out of body. Cold injury is very similar. It's actually one of the things, if you look, there's this influx of sodium and influx of calcium because the sodium potassium ATP pump becomes dysfunctional. The um, acidosis also causes this because the, body, the, the cells become acidotic. So the issue with cold injury is, is it, is it good to keep grafts cold? And we're going to talk a little bit about that because there's some benefits to it. The metabolism is vastly reduced, which is great, but there is cold injury. Are there storage media that can reduce this risk of cold injury? The final type of injury is ischemia reperfusion injury. What that means is when a tissue is taken out of the body and then placed back into the body, when there's more oxygenation that now is brought back into that cell, there can be free radical damage and that, that can also cause damage to grafts. So this is a, a flow, if you see when, the, when a tissue is taken out of the body and placed into a cold storage medium, you, go, you get storage injury, cold injury, followed by, as is being re-implanted, ischemia reperfusion injury. So we try to in, reduce these types of injuries, these types of injuries. So let's talk about extracellular versus intracellular. Which is better? Remember what I showed you is that with extracellular fluid, they go rushing into the cell, causing it to swell. So if you can keep the ex external uh, situation, external environment similar to the intracellular environment, there's less chance of this influx of sodium um, and rupture of these cells. So extracellular fluids are basically what we've used for many years, just IV solutions. Intracellular fluids are specifically tissue holding solutions used in liver transplants, organ transplants, etc. And so are these better? My argument they are, but is there really a big difference? And we'll talk about that as we proceed here. We talked about the acidosis that occurs with storage injury, and saline and Ringer's lactate really have a low pH, and that can actually exacerbate damage to the grafts. Plasmolite A and these other intracellular fluids have a better um, physiologic pH, and also saline as buffer. So what's wrong with saline? It's been used for decades. Limmer showed an 88% graft survival. Um, again, that was back in the FUT strip days when the grafts were a little hardier at eight hours. So it's, it's successful. Why can't you use saline? I'm not saying you can't. I have used saline with great success. But the problem is that they're really these small studies. They're, they're, they're hard to tease out these little differences of five or 10%. And there's short time out of body. And you said, well, I'm not going to leave a graft in for 24, 48, 72, 96 hours. But think about today is with FUE cases that are long, larger mega session procedures with either procedure FUT or FUE, those grafts may be, you may have to come back the next day to put in grafts. You may stay really late one night. The uh, staff is really tired. So what if you need to keep that graft overnight? Will saline work? And the answer is probably not. 
So here's the problem. If you look at saline studies, they're short out of a body time. If you look at that graph, where the survival is very similar is at eight hours. But when you start to see saline over a longer time, these are, again, small studies, there's a marked diminution in terms of quality. If you start looking at immunofluorescence, you start to see that hypothermosol, and I have no financial affiliations with these companies, that there's, if you look at it, you see the keratinocytes after a day still have great uh, activity compared to no normal saline. Fibroblasts at three days and stem cells after a day ex vivo still have great activity with hypothermosol versus normal saline. If you look at Tripan Blue studies, there's really no difference, but after five days at four degrees, you can start to see the saline really has um, a tissue viability issue through this Tripan uh, Blue staining. And at two weeks in vivo, uh, sorry, in vitro, you can see the dermal papilla that the saline has zero activity, whereas there's great survival at hypothermosol versus, and, and of course, much better at hypothermosol ATP, ATP. And this is incredible, this is two weeks out. So the hypothermosol ATP, I like to call it like Reese's peanut butter cups. They work together, you know, peanut butter and chocolate go well together. Hypothermosol, so this is one of those things, helps when it's in a cold environment to reduce the storage and cold injury, as well as that ischemia reperfusion injury. And we use it as a spray postoperatively, which we'll discuss in a minute. And liposomal ATP acts as an energy source. It helps to maintain the integrity of that sodium potassium ATP pump and gives the this, this cell a source of energy to combat acidosis and to minimize the injury that, is, that occurs. So this is a study that was done in 2009 by Jerry Cooley. You can see that at five, day, five days in this irradiated, out operated basal cancer of the temple, that saline had no survival, whereas hypothermosol by itself had a 45% survival. And hypothermosol versus, uh, with ATP had a 73% survival in graphs. So this is a study uh, done by Beener in 2011, where you can see that in the first eight hours, there isn't appreciable difference. You could still argue that ATP hypothermosol had a better result. And then it starts to become much more obvious after 24 hours. But let's look back at those first few hours. There is a higher survival. And I have seen, I've been using hypothermosol ATP since 2014. I've been using PRP and ACEL since 2011. And I've seen this market shift in improvement in graph survival uh, over that time. So, I think that part of the equation is not just storing your graphs in ATP, but there's this period of time from the first day out to the first five days where the graphs, I call it CPR for the graphs, where that blood supply is starting to take hold in that first two to four, two to five days, and an ATP spray, which a patient spray every hour, really, really does well. I'll give you my formula of how I put this together in a minute. So the, we're going to end this lecture with the idea of regenerative medicine. I'm not going to talk about all this stuff. You've already heard I've talked about parts of this. But I personally believe these are a continuum. And how do I put all these pieces together? So practically speaking, how I do it is I take the ATP, which comes in 25 and 50 milliliter uh, bottles, take 50 milliliters it, uh, for larger cases. I use 25 for very small cases. I split it. So I, for the graph storage, I use 10 cc's of ATP and 100 cc's of hypothermosol for graph storage. And I use 40 cc's of ATP, the remaining ATP, and 400 cc's of plasma light mix those together and I spray all the grafts, during, so the grafts stay hydrated during the surgery and um, post-op spray for the patients to spray themselves every hour until they have no more in that little bottle. And that usually takes between two to four days, which is exactly what I need to keep those grafts hardier and surviving. I've seen actually with ATP hyperthermosol a faster growth rate. Gra uh, grafts, initially before PRP and ACL, I started seeing grafts uh, sh uh, grow about six to eight months. When I added PRP and ACL, I started seeing graphs grow about five to six months. Now I'm seeing as early as sometimes three to four months with ATP hyperthermosol. The graphs actually look even better uh, transplanted uh, because I think there's some mechanical injury when a graft is placed in and by having this extra benefit, the graphs survive better even against mechanical injury, especially for inexperienced staff if you're just starting out. So for me, when I take, if I do an FUT strip, the graft comes out to minimize cold injury, it goes straight into PPP, platelet pore plasma, before it goes into the uh, slivers of ATP hyperthermosol. For FUE grafts, they go straight into ATP hyperthermosol. So that's a little distinction there. And then my PRP mixture, which is a 5X PRP, with 100 milligrams of fine powdered A-cell, which again is an extracellular um, bladder matrix, porcine bladder matrix, that gets injected with the recipient sites after the recipient sites are completed. And they're also used to coat the grafts right before insertion. Uh, I use about five cc's that coat the grafts and I have about 10 cc's injected 
Uh, I use the angel system. I, I mix down about 120 cc's of, of blood. Again, no financial affiliation with these companies. So these are some examples. I think this gentleman that has bad scar tissue from and a bad eyebrow transplant from multiple surgeries and scar tissue from cancer has this kind of survival after a single surgery is obviously due to quality results in terms of quality surgery, but also due to these these uh, techniques of, of hypothermosol, ATP, PRP, and A cell. The lady that's had uh, hair loss from scar from brain cancer surgery, chemotherapy, and you can see that with one session, a pretty great result. Lady that had basal cell cancer with significant uh, uh, loss in the area due, due to a skin graft, but this is a take after a single session. Um, of note for this lady, she did also have postoperative uh, hyperbaric oxy oxygen as well to further enhance things in about, I think, two to four sessions. So take home lessons is good technique trumps all of these different storage media issues. Saline is workable, it's worked forever, but for, you, uh, for people that are not re ready to invest the cost of hypothermosol ATP, plasma light may, may be a better option because the pH is better. But if you can afford it and if you, if you can introduce it, hypothermosol ATP is typically, a, a, to me, a much better solution for you. In addition to that, um, especially for you young guys that are just starting with uh, long cases where your graft's gonna have long ex vivo time, I would really encourage you to use this so, so that, let's say you have to stay over stay overnight, so let's say your, your surgery goes in late, saline, your grafts may be dead. With hyperthermosol ATP, you have a better chance of survival. So I don't make any money on all my books. They all go to charity. They stop sex trafficking in the world, which I'm very passionate about to stop. I think it's a horrible disease. We have 40 million slaves in the world right now. In volume three, I talk specifically more about storage media. In volume one, I talk more about regenerative medicine. They're all covered in, on all these uh, uh, books and of course FUE in my fourth edition. And come to St. Louis, I make no money also on my course. I'm very passionate about teaching. I think the biggest thing is it's not watching me do the surgery, it's watching you do the surgery. And due to COVID this year, 2020, there is no course, but we'll be resuming next year in, in uh, t uh, July 23rd to 24th in St. Louis. Uh, as the incoming president for the ABHRS, American Board of Hair Restoration Surgery, I'm very passionate about quality, I'm very passionate about teaching, and I'm very passionate about you guys, and I hope you can uh, become a diplomate eventually when you uh, are graduated to the point where you meet all the criteria. Thank you for your attention this morning.